My name is Zemois Baptista. I'm a first generation farmer north of uh, Ulysses, Nebraska, about five miles. We row crop on the side a little bit and then we cow calf and we are primarily a broiler barn operation where, where we operate uh, broiler chickens for, for Costco. My dad grew up on a farm. He's from Angola, Africa, which is a little bit different than, than what you typically see here in the Midwest or you know, even in Nebraska. So he's a Methodist minister and that's, where, that's how they got over here. And he attended uh, SMU. After he graduated, he'd wanted a place, you know, kind of like where, you know, he grew up, smaller area, you know, where you know people, things like that. Friend, Nebraska is where is where we ended up, and that's where I grew up. So I've been involved in agriculture about my whole my whole life since I was little. You know, living in a small community like that, you're always helping out. I always knew I wanted to farm since I was a little kid. That was just something I enjoyed and loved. I think it was just in my blood. I didn't know that, you know, I'd get to probably do it quite as early, but I was kind of given, you know, the opportunity, you know, to, to, to make it work. It's tough for, for a lot of people to, to be able to get started, and I think that'd be one of the biggest, biggest challenges in agriculture today is getting younger people back, back to the farm or back to rural communities. Day to day is, you know, we raise, we raise animals, so animals are always our, you know, our biggest and most important priority so they, they get looked at before anything else gets done. You know, they'll eat almost any day before we do. You know, you gotta make sure they're fed, you gotta make sure they're taken care of. If it's, you know, snowing, you're making sure that lanes are cleared so you can get feed in. You're making sure that bunks are scooped out so that they can eat. I mean, they're just always taken care of before before us and we try to make sure that, that people know that, that we care about our animals and, and we wouldn't do anything but, but treat them, you know, the way we'd want to be treated. You know, our rations for, for what we feed our birds, you know, they're not just primarily a corn diet. You know, there's, there's soybean meal that go into those. It can be anywhere from, you know, 20 to 30 percent, you know, you know, soybean meal that goes into that to make a good ration for, for growing birds. We're primarily a roughage kind of feed here as far as, as hay goes and, you know, maybe a little bit of supplement protein, whether it be corn or, or things along those lines. But soybeans, you know, are, are pretty important to us too as far as making sure our soils stay healthy and, and that we're getting the right ration for, for the birds that we're growing. With ag, you've always got the chance to learn. You're always, you know, trying to make yourself better and make your operation work. And that's what I love about the challenge. Every day's not the same. Everything's different. You know, it's just, it's fun to wake up and, and you know, attack the day and, and, and get what you can done. And, you know, my brothers are both, they both come out quite often, even though, you know, this isn't what, you know, maybe they signed up for. Maybe that's not what they want to do with their future. But, you know, they'll find themselves out here a few days a week, you know. And my dad, he, he's out here a couple days a week. <laughs> Russell, he's a he's a little over a year old. He's he's an Aussie Corgi mix, which you know a lot of people probably don't see that kind of dog very often. But he just he loves being out here as much as I do. He gets to stay out here all day and get dirty and you know be a be a farm dog. And then he goes home and he gets to be a little house dog and gets gets about anything he wants. So he's he's a pretty pretty lucky dog in my opinion. So. We we try to be good stewards of the land and. You know, try to make sure that everything is sustainable for the next generation because if we don't do that, there's not going to be anything here for, for the people to come. You know, I've got my first son that, that we just had here about five weeks ago. And it, just for an example, if I don't take care of the land, making sure that I keep the, the nutrients, whether it be micronutrients or, you know, whatever needs to be in the soil to, to sustain soil health, making sure that, you know, we're staying sustainable and I'm treating the land and everything else as best I can so that it's going to be here, not just for, you know, my son, but maybe his son and, you know, any other generation to come. We kind of have the goal of having, you know, a bigger family if they want the opportunity to be able to, to work here. So I want to be able to continue to grow and have my legacy to say that, you know, we built something that, that can support, support our family and, you know, maybe a few others. Seeing that family element makes it a little easier sometimes when you're struggling and you like, why would I do this? I could, I could go work 40 hours a week and be done and look away at Friday and not have to worry about anything anymore and probably make a little more money doing it and, you know, seeing the family aspect of it, it does, does bring it full circle and it, it does bring enough reward, you know, to the job to, to keep going and to keep doing it.